wonderful name. You have done great things. The God of great wonders. The one who demonstrates his awesome power in the lives of his children. Father, we glorify your name. You are not a liar. That is one thing you never do. Glory and majesty be to your name. Thank you for turning the counsel of the ungodly to nothing, oh God. We bless your name, oh God, because only you have the power and the might and the majesty. And all glory belongs to you and you alone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making ways where there are no ways. Blessed be your name. Father, we thank you. Even for the testimonies that are still in the making. We thank you for those that are here, that your people are saying, you know what, I'm just taking my time. We are giving you all the glory. Blessed be your name. <laughs> Father, even as we go briefly into your word, we ask that you will breathe on your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, today, O oh Lord, open the inner eyes of your children that we might see into the depths, O oh God, of the realm of the spirit. And Lord, you unveil to us the mystery behind the words in the name of Jesus. Today, O oh Lord, do all that you alone can do. And all the glory, O oh Lord, belongs to you and nobody else in Jesus' name. Even concerning this topic. And I pray that it will breathe upon his word. And this word we will run with it in Jesus' name. And the, the, you know, the title of the short exhortation is in his presence. His presence. His presence. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We're talking of the presence of our God. And this morning, we want to look at his word because his word cannot fail. And as we get this understanding, we will run with it like never before. The text is taken from Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11. And uh, along the line, this is an assignment for all of us. We'll be reading Exodus chapter 1 to 3. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 16, verse 11. And uh, I will read the, uh, the Amplified. It says, you will show me the path of life in, in your presence. Is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pa pleasures forevermore. You will show me the path of life. Hallelujah. In his presence. In his presence is fullness of life. In his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The psalmist said something first. That, you know, what God's, that God's presence does. And he says, God's presence, show him the path of life. God's presence will show the path of life. Hmm. Life is deeper than what we think. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's deeper than being alive. Hallelujah. Life, show me life. That life that is referred to is more than somebody being alive. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We will get there. And, you know, the person that we're considering with this topic in his presence is um, no other than Moses. Praise the Lord. And in Exodus chapter 3, verse 3 to 2, this was, you know, this scenario happened after some incident happened to Moses. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him, I'm reading the King James Version, in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt? He said he would do what? He will turn aside. The first thing that happens 
for anybody that is going to experience the presence of God, is that there must be a turn around. There must be a turning aside. Praise the name of the Lord. And as he turned aside, we're reading to verse 5. He said, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the world, out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. This is preceding our Lord Jesus coming. It's the same thing that the Lord is calling to somebody today and saying, Margaret, Margaret. But Moses turned aside. He was ready and he said, here I am. When the Lord called him and the Lord started speaking to him. And he said, don't draw near, Peter. Put off your shoes from off your feet. For the place wherein thou standest he is holy ground. God was saying, you cannot come near until the filthiness, the sin is taken away. So stand where you are, take off your shoes. And you know somebody was telling me, say, if they say the, 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 the part of a man's body, human body that smells most, he said it's our toes. Praise the Lord. He said it's the toes. And I was like, the toes? He said, it's our feet. He said, it's our toes. He said, that is why some people, when they have that issue, you, will not, you cannot even sit near there because it stings. He said, so God was just, you know, he was just, I'm just, you know, relating that to it. So he said, yeah, I am. And from there, the Lord started giving him instruction. Today, for those who have given their lives to Christ, glory be to God. For those who are yet to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you need to cry to him. Because his presence is loaded. All that is to life is in his presence. It is in his presence that shows the path of life. His presence is the one that gives the fullness of joy. And in his right hand, her pleasures forevermore. I will not end this lesson today because it's deep, it's in part. But I just want us to, you know, lay the background. So prior to this encounter in Exodus chapter 3, in Exodus chapter 2, 11 to 15, something happened to Moses. Moses now realized that it is true I'm living in the palace, but I am not an Egyptian. The Bible says, and it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on, the, on their bodies. He now started having body. These are my people. I am not an Egyptian. And he looked on their body and he spied on the Egyptian, smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And then in verse 12, he said, and he looked this way. He looked that way. And when he saw that no one was watching, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Hmm. He thought he was covered. The following day, he went out. Salma, he was his own brethren. Two Israelites that were having a, a, a discussion. He intervened. Well, you guys told the one that was wrong. What you did is not right. Turn to him and say, hey, hello, Moses. You want to kill me the same way you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Who has made you a judge and a ruler over Israel? At that point, Moses realized in verse 15 that he's in trouble. <laughs> he's, then he said he's in trouble. Because now Pharaoh was looking, had what happened, and was looking for him. Praise the name of the Lord. So he had to leave. So he left in chapter 2. And then he got to find favor. He started dwelling in Mera. It was where he was dwelling. Then the Lord called him. He had this experience. So, Ma, sin is a disgrace. 
Sin brings reproach. It doesn't matter whether it is Eden. Because when he killed that man, they thought nobody knew about it. Because he looked this way, he looked that way, and he hid him in the sand. So that nobody will even find his remains. But then, God did not count it against him. Hallelujah. He, God did not count it against him. Thank God for the mercy of God. Thank God for the mercy of God. Thank God for the mercy of God. Don't look down on anybody because you don't know whether God is still going to use them. I don't know who this is for, but that person, that person that you have been praying for, you have pierced as if what is happening. The Lord is touching them. That will be another Paul. Hallelujah. That will be another Billy Graham because you don't know where they are going. But even with that, prior to that, you know, encounter again, after he had now, you know, fled, <laughs> he, he now said, you know, the Bible said the wicked, according to Proverbs 28, you know, A, he said the wicked flee when no man pursues. Hmm. But in this chapter 3, he now started seeing another, when he made that turn around, the Lord started speaking to him. And then the, the, the question now is, we are talking, we are still on the, in, you know, in, in his pleasure, when, when God, you know, the, the, we are still going back to him, God show me the path of life. So the path of life is different from, you know, being alive. Being alive is different from life, living itself. And I will prove it. Praise the Lord. The woman described in Luke chapter 3, 13, from verse 10 to 17, the woman that had her back bent. <laughs> Hallelujah. She was, she was alive, but she was not living. Hallelujah. I repeat it again. Being alive is not living. It's not the life that's... Because you can be alive, but not living. She was not living for the 18 years she was bent until Jesus came in. The presence of the Most High came in. And among everybody, Jesus healed her. And you know, to my surprise, take time to read it from that verse 10 to 17. Because after, he said, and, he, and in verse 13, he said, and he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Look at verse 14. He said, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to walk. In them came and be healed and not on the Sabbath. Then Jesus answered him and said, thou hypocrite, do you not each of you on the Sabbath lose his or her heart from the store and lead them away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? I decree to somebody this morning, any power that has kept you, Chita 4, Itato, from this minute, the same order that the presence of Jesus came upon this woman and terminated this bondage. For of 18 years, the Lord is stepping in. Amen. The Lord is stepping in. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will now wonder ah, why this trouble? The man by the beautiful gate, he was alive, but he was not living. He was always by the beautiful gate with the lame leg. Everybody enter into the temple. He cannot come in. He was alive, but he was not living. Anything that is making you to be alive and not living, from this minute they depart from you. Amen. You will start to live according to the word of the Lord. Amen. And so I was like, what happened? And then the Holy Spirit brought me back. 
to that Exodus chapter 1. In Exodus chapter 1, you know, because of our time, I will just, you know, summarize it. It started with, you know, saying the people that came to Egypt and that there were 70 of them, including Jacob and Joseph, that came to Egypt. And then this new king came into power. And when this new king came into power, he didn't know, you know, it was an, a, new, a, new, a new king who did not know Joseph. So there were 70 when they came. But look at what they, what they recorded in verse, in verse uh, 9. He said, and he said unto his people, this is this new king, behold the people of the children, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Hallelujah. This is the reason why the enemy does not want any child of God to live. So that you will not, because living is fulfilling that mandate at creation. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the air, subdue it. He said, they are great. And they are more, they are more mightier than we. Come, let us deal with them wisely. Let us, you know, so they multiplied their trouble. They multiplied their pain. The gazette set taskmaster over them. But in verse 12, he said, But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Everyone that said you will not live life according to the order of God and the mandate at creation, from now they will begin to be grieved. Amen. They will be grieved in the morning. They will be grieved in the noon. They will be grieved every minute of their life. Because you must live life to the fullness. In the mighty name of Jesus. People are wicked. But according to his word, his word is yea. And they are amen. It doesn't matter what they say. You will live and you will live life abundantly. I will stop here. But we are going to take some prayer points, few prayer points. And by the grace of God, I will continue the part two because that is where we are really going. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is where we are really going because we, we have just been able to deal with, you know, it will show me the part of life. The part of life is how you maneuver while you are here. The part of life is revelation. Revelation. Our brother was saying before, you know, they saw it. So they know how to maneuver. The part of life is where you will be at the right place at the right time. The part of life is that what is killing every other person will not kill you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While others are dying, while others are suffering, you will not suffer. Amen. The part of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to rise. Because we need to take this, you know, a, a couple of prayer points from, from these uh, passages. You'll find out that before Moses was born, Pharaoh already said they should kill all male children in chapter 2. He, he instructed the, you know, I mean in chapter 1, he instructed the midwives. He told them, he said, you know, kill everyone. But in verse 17 of that chapter 1, the midwives, they feared God. So they were, you know, keeping, they were not keeping to that instruction. In verse 18, he said, and the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing? And have saved the men, men children alive. So he said, from now, he said that you know they lied to him, you know, that the evil men are very strong before they, you know, the, the, the child comes. So he gave another order. But God did, you know, dealt with them very well, dealt with the midwives very well. And so in chapter two, Moses was born. At the time they say every male child must die. The Bible recorded that is you know, when the, his mother conceived. And in, you know, in, 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 verse, in uh, um, verse 2, 
He said he saw that he was a goodly child. And then to say he was a special baby. So Moses was special. So man, when you were created, you are special. Amen. You are still special. Amen. But the enemy is looking. He knows that you are special. He knows that Moses is not an ordinary person. He's a deliverer. And he will work in that purpose. So he went to make that law before he was born. No wonder the same thing happened during the birth of our Lord Jesus. When they said, go and kill, kill every male child. But despite that, Moses was preserved. He was not only preserved. He was preserved in the palace. After the mother put him in the bush and sent him the water, the sister was following. Why was it at that time that uh, Pharaoh's daughter went to the well at the same time? Divine arrangements. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the child that was supposed to die became, he said, uh, the girl came and said, you, do you need a nurse? He said, yes. Give, brought the mother of the baby. Paid the mother of the baby to take care of her own child until he was grown. Until he was grown before Moses came to the palace. The wonders of our God. Somebody is going to pray this morning. You are going to pray this morning. That in the name that is above every other name. The power that sustained Moses made him not to die despite all. And sustained him. Every effort, whatever, whoever God has strategically provided for your lifting, for you not to die in this wilderness, let the heaven begin to connect them now. Let heaven begin to connect you with them now. In the mighty name of Jesus, the same order, the same order, the same order, the same order. It positioned that woman there to get to take care of Moses. Paid the mother to take care of her son. Masaka Labrash and Delebro. Rebrand the soon to Korima Kandelebo. Why others are dying? Why every man child died? This child was preserved. You will be preserved. You will be preserved. You will be preserved. You will be preserved. Everything that you need to, to preserve to you to so to, to so high. The Lord is connecting you because the provision is already there. I want you to call for the provision that heaven has made for your lifting. Heaven has made for your sustenance. Let them begin to come now. In the name of Jesus, call them forth, call them forth. Call them forth, call them forth. You will be at the right place at the right time. They will not sleep until they hear your name. Mommy shared that testimony. That man left that office. But because there is an assignment for his daughter, the Lord brought him back again two months again that you need to complete this assignment. Who is that person? Who is that person that God cannot turn, cannot bring back because of you? Oh, Master Calabra, Kashikin Delibro, Rima Sato, Remo Kumbaya Calabra. Ibra kasheke le broko son talaba landora makumba yima siketele ya baba le brande kasakara mashinda la braka sendere bo he positioned the midwives masoto robo kumba kandele bro re bashi kotondele broko santala ya baba re kebo shakotele ya makendele bro in the name of Jesus blessed be your name and you are going to cry to the Lord for somebody that is already giving up you are already saying I can't handle this I can't handle this I can't handle this. Imagine if, if, if Moses' mother had said, you know what, let him just die. Every other child is dying. But she refused. You are going to stand in your spirit now and say, no, I refuse. I refuse to be ordinary. I refuse to be ordinary. I refuse to just be alive. I am living. I start to live. You show me the path of life. From now, I begin to live. I live life to the fullest. In the name of Jesus. When you live life to the fullest, everything that is dying around you comes alive. Begin to live. I live to the fullest. I live to the fullest. Master to fulfill mandate. Moses fulfilled his mandate. I will fulfill my mandate. You will fulfill your mandate. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we glorify your name. We give you praise. We give you honor. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Father, your word has come. And you said that you are about to do what will shock our generation. Father, go ahead, O oh Lord, and do your strange work. Father, for everyone that have just been alive, but are not living from this minute, oh God. 
Let new life begin. Amen. Because it was at that encounter, he was already 40 years old. He started a new life. From that burning bush experience, Moses started life afresh. Stagnancy took grace. He went back to the same place that they said they're going to kill him. He became a leader right there. Father, I pray for your children. Where they have been rejected. Where they have been cornered. Father, documents that have been hidden. To pervert, oh God, your children from being promoted. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Most High, begin to connect everything together. And they will not just connect it alone. You will pay them back. Sevenfold in the mighty name of Jesus. For every tears, oh God. I decree this morning over you. You are not permitted to shed any more tears of sorrow. From now, the only tears you will share will be the tears of joy. You will look back and say, I never knew you will honor me this way. That is the only tears you are permitted to shed in the mighty name of Jesus. Any power that says it cannot be so, as the Lord liveth, the Lord will take care of them. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, and they were wearied. They became wearied. They became, they, the Lord will weary them out in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's celebrate our Father. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Hallelujah.